In this video, we're gonna talk about the most commonly asked question, how to know if your belt's properly tensioned and which belt is best for you. Bonus, we're gonna talk about the old Procharger tensioner and the new Procharger tensioner. Over the years, the old version of the Procharger tensioner was like the workhorse of our operation. Although recently, the engineers have come up with a new style spring-loaded tensioner that's just a little bit easier and quicker to operate. Plus, it allows you to get some adjustment to put some preload into the belt. So, as you notice, right here, to change the tension, you're just gonna slide your ratchet into it and ignore this bolt. Do not touch this. Otherwise, you're gonna end up making the tensioner come apart. So, just like a common spring load tensioner, you just apply force, you can slip your belt on, and you're good to go. Now, what I wanna show people, this is very important. See how when the tensioner's in this position, not much force at all. We really gotta get this bent back to get the preload in it. The farther we can bend it back, the more preload we can. So, what the engineers have done, these bolts on the backside allow us to rotate the tensioner body to put even more preload into the spring. This is currently the loosest position, and if we moved it up one notch, we would add a bit more tension. Now, some kits will have two bolt holes, other kits have three bolt holes. It just depends on how many belt pulley combinations we have for it. So again, if we rotate that up, more tension gets applied. Here on the front side, you're gonna notice there are some pre-drilled and tapped holes in various locations. What that does, is depending on your application and what belt pulley combo you're running, you can actually add idlers in place. And what this does is it's gonna make it to where you can add as much belt tension as possible. So I'm actually gonna apply two tensioners in their highest positions, which will be the most tension we can put once I pry this tensioner back and get the belt on. So before I do that, pro tip, you, depending on how much tension you're trying to put, you might need a friend, someone to hold this tensioner back, put on the belt, and put the idlers on before you let the belt down. So sometimes, depending on the combination, you got to put the idlers on at the same time as the belt. Again, 90% of the people probably don't need that, but if you're really trying to push the envelope of horsepower, you're going to have to do anything, to, everything you can do to get as much force in this belt. I'm going to show you what I mean by first installing the belt with no idlers in place and we'll see how the tensioner locates and how much force it has. So you just pull back on your breaker bar, slip the belt on, and you're done. Now, I can move that pretty darn easy. Again, no idlers are in place. Um, probably could get away with running a shorter belt, but let's go ahead and stick some idlers in here and put some preload in that tensioner. Now you notice we have the two idlers added and there is a lot more tension, and that's it. So if you have a kit that has multiple idler positions, you just need to play around with it until you get this tensioner in the perfect spot. This isn't even as tight as it could go. Again, I could rotate that tensioner body one more notch and get even more force in this belt. So just some simple idler changes, just rotating the tensioner completely changes the amount of preload you can put in this belt. I guarantee in this position right here, this is good to go. Probably a thousand horsepower just on a common belt. Ooh, yeah, that's a good sound. Remember that part I said about putting on the belt with the idlers? Okay, well, let me talk about that a bit more. So I get a lot of questions saying, hey, my belt doesn't fit. Hey, I can't get my belt on. So you'll notice I have taken the tensioner completely off, not even part of the picture. Obviously, I can take the belt, slide it on, and be good to go. Now, remember that part about the idlers? Okay, so let's say we put the idlers back in that position that I had them in. Now that I got the idlers in position, same belt, nothing's changed. You'll notice I'm gonna route the belt, and I can't, I can't even get the belt on, and there's not even a tensioner in play. This is where people will call our tech line and they would say, I can't get the belt on, the belt's the wrong size, I've been stretching it. So, to that, all you gotta do is remove one of the idlers, put the belt on, and then put the idler back in place. 
And there you go. Obviously, this could have been done with the tensioner on. You just have to take the tension off of it. But I was just proving the point that without changing the belt, you can go from being able to put it on very easy to being able to put it on a little bit difficult. And I assure you, if it's a little difficult to put on, that's the best. Because then that means that thing is going to be really tight when that tensioner applies force. OK, now to the old style tensioner. So we talked about how idler placement on the bracket can affect how you put your belt on. Another thing, some of our kits can have what's called a repositioning bracket. So you'll notice there's a ton of holes drilled into this bracket. What that does is it allows us to move this bracket up, down, and in and out. So that way, if you have like a steering gearbox down here or maybe an inner fender that's pretty close, you could suck the blower in a little bit or drop it down to clear the hood. And that's all awesome. But just remember, every time this bracket moves, you're changing the center distance from the crankshaft to the blower pulley, which is going to affect the belt length. So when you start moving this around, just have that in the back of your head that that can affect the belt length. Okay, let's get this bracket fully installed. The old bracket's bolted up, and we just used a random location on the relocation bracket, so that way we could use the belt that we were using in the last part of the video. First things first, look how loose that tensioner is. If your tensioner isn't that loose, you're not ready to put on a belt, and that's okay. We'll show you how to do that in a second. Now, since I know this belt's going to be pretty tight, I'm going to start on the blower pulley, since it has the biggest edges on it. I'm going to work my way under the tensioner, and around the crank pulley to slip it on. So if I would have started on the crank and then done the blower, it would have been a little bit more difficult and I would have had to walk it on. Okay, now, how do you get this tensioner loose and ready to tension? Before we get to these backside bolts that we need to loosen up, I just want to make a quick note. Don't ever loosen this bolt. Same on the new tensioner, same on the old tensioner. Center bolt, bad news. That's what's holding the tensioner together. So if you start prying on this or whatever, you will break the tensioner. Okay, now to the backside. To make sure your tensioner is all loosey-goosey and ready to start adding the preload, you have to make sure that this three-quarter bolt on the backside is loose. Also this 14 millimeter down here, as well as up on the top and on the front side of the bracket. Now, when these come shipped to you, these are actually gonna be all tensioned down. Um, that's just to make sure they don't rattle loose in shipping and stuff. So you have to loosen those up. Once those are loose, this will move freely, which is going to allow us to start putting the preload into this nut right here. So I'm going to use a 9 16th on a little drill impact. And what I want you to see is, see that notch right there? And then a, there's two notches there and two notches there. This is the middle point for the tensioner, meaning there's no preload on it right now. So as I tension this, you're going to watch these this marker is going to come near the tension markers. I try to set it like right in between the, the two notches. Well, that's probably good, actually. Yeah, that's real good. So we still have plenty of range on the tensioner. She can go all the way back or all the way forward. Now that the preload is put into the belt, we have to lock down the tensioner to make sure it can't move over time and we'll take the stress off of this preloader. So we're gonna go back in here with our three quarter wrench and we're gonna sn start snugging up this bolt. Now it's a little tight in here and that's okay because once you've done this, you only have to do it once. It's kind of a set it and forget it process. The backside of the tensioner is now all locked in with the preload set. So we're ready to make some big boost and some big power. Again, all this eye bolt does is sets the preload of the tensioner. Once it's locked in, there's, there's no weight on this anymore. So that's the thing you gotta remember. Because if you go to tension the belt again, or you wanna undo tension and you hit this with an impact, you'll bend it. Because again, that three quarter bolt and that 14 millimeter are holding it in place. So re always remember, 
undo those back bolts and this front bolt first before ever hitting this. And that's it. It's actually a pretty simple little tensioner. And like I said, it's done really well for like 20 years. Um, as long as you know the operation, loosen it up, load it, lock it down, unload it, and you're good. So that's it. Probably the second biggest question I get or I see all over the internet is what belt should you be running with a supercharger? Now, at Procharger, we have three different versions, four actually, if you count Bando brand. For 95% of the people or anybody really making 800 horsepower or less, the run of the mill Gates or Bando belt is gonna be great for you. It's gonna have like a medium stretch. It's also gonna have a medium grip and they're OEM. So they're gonna last a really long time. Now. For the guys that are trying to get big, big power, you know, above 900,000 and, and beyond, the internet, it, it really likes what they call the green belt from, from Gates. Now, the green belt, I, I, it's a love-hate with me because it has a lot of grip, which is great, but its downside is, is it's soft. So the belt life is pretty low. So if you're gonna be running these, you do have to change these frequently. The other downside is that they have a lot of stretch. And that's what they're designed to do. So it's not a flaw. They're meant to stretch. So that stretch is great unless you have a tensioner that's right at the end of its line. So if the tensioner is taking up that slack, taking up that slack, and then it can't anymore, but the belt still wants to stretch, well, guess what? Now you got a lot of slip. And the old, the standard belt would have actually been better for you. So the hybrid between these two is the new one. That's the Gates RPM belt. Gates actually designed this belt um, with supercharger companies to make one that had high grip and low, low stretch. So again, this belt is gonna grip really good. And as your tensioner is moving, it's gonna have the least amount of movement. So I can't say that th either one of these is gonna be your best. You're gonna just have to play with that depending on what belt pulley combo you got. But again, point being 95% people or more, standard belt's gonna be great. And then it's awesome that there are two options for guys making big, giant horsepower. We hope this helps whether you got a new style tensioner or an old style tensioner, or you just want to know the differences in the belts. But if you got any more detailed questions on how to make these two things perfect, we have an awesome tech staff ready to answer any question you have. So feel free to reach out at any time. Other than that, we'll see you in the next one.